So today we're going to talk about blood lights. Those are lights that are used generally by hunters. So when they shoot an animal and they need to track that animal by its traces of blood, uh, it's a light to help them see that blood so they can find the animal that they, they shot. And I've seen some really great presentations on YouTube that different people have done buying different blood lights and different experiments. And they were really great. And I thought, you know, I, I'd do my own from a more nerdy kind of engineering perspective. So the way I approach this is first I'm going to look at uh, spectrums of foliage and blood. Now, these are general curves taken off the Internet. They're public domain. And this foliage is is green foliage. It's uh, uh, green grass and leaves and things like this. So if you look at the green curve there, uh, that's the reflectivity. So those are the colors of light that reflect off foliage. And the chlorophyll in the foliage absorbs the blue light, which is over there at that, you know, 500 nanometers and shorter. And it also absorbs the red light, but it doesn't do a good job of absorbing green light. And the green light gets reflected. And that's why plants look green. And granted, some plants are a little more green than others. Some are kind of brownish. But in general, if it's alive, it has chlorophyll, and so it has this uh, greenish reflectivity to it. This is reflected spectrum. So the, the higher up that value is, the more light of that color gets reflected. And at the very bottom there, I show you a, a, a kind of a rainbow uh, to give you an idea what these numbers mean to the human eye. So the way the human eye sees these numbers. And then, I've got also a reflective spectrum of blood. So blood doesn't reflect very much light until it gets way out near 600 nanometers and longer. And uh, out there at 650, it reflects really well. That's why blood has that deep kind of crimson red color to it because it's, it's reflecting red, not very much of the other colors. And in fact, it best reflects red in the deep red kind of, far out where our eye starts to lose sensitivity, actually. So if we wanted to make an illumination system to see blood on foliage, what would we do? Well, we'll have one LED for foliage, and I drew a vertical line to represent the light emission from that LED. Uh, I would have probably chosen something like 550 nanometers but I didn't have one. I had one pretty close, so at 530 nanometers. And you can see at this color here, uh, foliage has pretty good reflectivity, but blood has very little. And then we want a second LED to highlight the blood. And we'd want it way out where foliage doesn't have much reflectivity and blood has a lot. So I had one out here at about 660 nanometers. So two different LEDs, and you can see the first one Foliage has a lot of reflectivity, but blood does not. And the second one is the opposite. Blood has a lot of reflectivity, but foliage does not. So that's the goal, is to get those two LEDs, mix them, and see if we can come up with a high contrast blood light, blood tracking light. But there is another concern, and that is the human eye spectrum. So uh, the human eye, these are the, the three curves on here, blue, uh, green, and red. Those are the three cones inside the human eye, and you can see their sensitivity as a function of color. And the red cone, the one that we're pretty much interested in this case, you can see its sensitivity drops off at about 650 nanometers. It doesn't have much sensitivity there. And as you go further and further to the right, there's basically no sensitivity, and out there, be, that's beyond the color red, so it's infrared, or actually near infrared. And so we're starting to get in the near infrared there. And so if you're going to use two LEDs, a green and a red, the red LED is going to have to be much, much brighter just to look like it's the same intensity to the human eye. And so I know these two LEDs are not going to have the same power rating, that the red one's going to have to have much more power. So I'm going to have to have some system where I can adjust their intensity independently. So this is what I happen to already have from a different optics project I was working on. It holds two different LEDs inside of it. And then there's a that, that silver 
corrugated looking thing. That's a fiber bundle. It's a whole bunch of fiber optics. And it mixes the two LEDs together into one output. And those two knobs on top allow me to adjust the power of each LED independently. And I got very lucky. This one already had the two colors I needed installed inside of it from a different project. It was, <laughs> I just got lucky. So I didn't have to do much work for this project. I just had to snap these things back together. So, so the next step is to go outside and try it. And here this first image is with just the green LED on. And you can see right here on that blade of grass uh, is some dark stuff that's blood. And yeah, I poked my finger to get some blood. So it, the blood doesn't have very high reflectivity in the green, so it, it basically looks black. Um, not real high contrast. If you didn't know it was there, you, you would walk right by it. So next I, I turn the green LED off and, and turn only the red LED on. And you can see, now this is a, 660 is a good color for blood. Blood is highly reflective in this color. And granted the phone picture, I used my phone to take these pictures, doesn't show it as well. There's a little contrast there. Uh, I know a lot of blood lights use red to make blood pop, but I didn't think it really did at all. I, I thought it turned all the surrounding red uh, surrounding area red and the blood sure stood out a little bit but not very good then I slowly turned the green LED on a little brighter at a time until the contrast was maximum so this is still the red LED on full blast with the green LED turned up just a little bit until the the whole surrounding looked almost kind of whitish and uh, that blood really contrasted beautifully once that was done. Um, uh, so again, this is the green intensity adjusted to get the maximum contrast of red blood on green grass. This did really, really great. But once you compare it also with a white light LED, it, it is better than a white LED. If you saw it with your own eyes, you would say, yeah, it does pop more. But a white LED is super simple, and you can see that blood pretty clearly with a white LED as well. So the results are I was able to enhance contrast. That blood really did pop more on green grass with fresh red blood on it. Now in the prior slide, I was zoomed in. But here, if you look kind of zoomed out a little bit, you can see the whole picture. And... Only in the center of the field, of, uh, in the uh, center of the illumination, is the green and the red mixed properly. Out on the edges, uh, you see that the red kind of dominates, where it's more red light than green light. And on the very edge of that, there's more green light than red light. And that's because when I mix those two LEDs in a fiber bundle, it didn't do a perfect job. And so I only use the very center of the illumination profile for this experiment. But if it was used more formally, if you're actually to make a device out of this, a lot of work would have to be done to mix the red and the green properly so you don't get hot spots of green and red. Um, versus the white LED, which is the image on the right-hand side, you don't have to worry about that. It's uniform everywhere. And this is what the emission spectrum looks like. So after I adjusted the green intensity to to, to mix with the red and look with high contrast, um, you could see I had to use a lot more red light than I did green light. And this is what we expected because the human eye is much less sensitive to this deep red light. And so you have to use a lot more of it to make it look correct to the human eye. So in conclusion, you can mix red and green LEDs to make blood contrast better if you do two things. The, the red LED must be a deep red LED. Um, this is more difficult because your eye is not as sensitive there, and so you have to use a lot more power. And two, the way those two LEDs are mixed, they have to be mixed with the right intensity, so it's a lot more red light than it is green light. And also, they have to be mixed correctly spatially, so you don't get red and green blotches in your field of view. Um, also, I should note that this was optimized for red blood on green grass, but in hunting, you could have red blood on bare soil or on dried leaves or on rocks or, or snow, although snow, I think, will be easy to see no matter what. 
So this is optimized for a really narrow situation. Um, certainly a white light is more, uh, is a more general solution. Um, and I, I did very quickly look at the spectrum of bare soil. It's not, it doesn't have as much structure to it as foliage. There might be some combination of wavelengths to make blood on bare soil look really good. Uh, but for, for this experiment, I was just doing foliage and you could decide for yourself if it's worth experimenting with or not, uh, for your next hunt. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for your time.